am Dana and I'm a health coach. And I would love to talk today about the subconscious. And so one of the things that people are often looking for in health coach is to do behavior change. And so I often bring in some tools that are mind body tools. And in addition to that, I often talk about the subconscious. And so I'm going to explain the mind body connection. I'm going to explain some thoughts around the subconscious today. And I'm going to do that because a lot of people have a really hard time visualizing these ideas. I'm going to do this in visual format today. So hopefully that'll make it easier. And I'm going to talk about the ideas of some pretty famous people that are in psychology and the realm of exploring the subconscious. So this here is an iceberg. And the iceberg concept is one that we attribute to Freud. And this is his idea of what is the subconscious. And then over here, what we have is a picture of two different islands. And so this island here has a volcano on top. And this island here has a volcano on top as well. And so these are a couple of Hawaiian islands. So of course, we know Hawaii as an entity on its own. But then we also know of the Hawaiian islands themselves, such as the Big Island or Maui, as their own individual entities, right? So the idea with the iceberg concept, Freud's iceberg, is that you have a subconscious, which is really the primary, like the biggest part of your brain and the way that you make, you're, you're actually driving your behavior is actually this stuff under the water that you don't even see, that you don't even realize is there. Whereas your conscious mind is the upper part of the iceberg, the part that everybody knows is there. And in between, we have this stuff called unconscious. That's what he calls unconscious. So this is somewhere in between. Maybe you're kind of aware that you feel something, but you're not really sure why. Whereas with consciousness, this is where you're interacting with the day-to-day -day world. You're doing things. You're thinking things. You're making decisions. You are making choices. You are using your conscious thoughts to make the decisions that you're making. Now, when you are operating on more of a feeling level or you're not sure why you're thinking or doing what you're doing, that's more unconscious. And subconscious, is the place where all of these day-to-day -day interactions that you have through your whole life go to be stored. And so you, after many, many years of living, don't even realize all the stuff that is stored away in there. But under certain circumstances, we can actually get into the subconscious and we may be able to remember these things. So down here is also another subconscious. So this one is, what am I? Whoops. <laughs> Anyway, that's wrong. So this is a different subconscious over here. This one is referred to as the collective unconscious. And the collective unconscious is where we all have subconscious like memories, which is what this is over here. This is a repository for all kinds of memories. But this is shared history. This is shared things, music and big world events. And now with our globalized world, the whole world to some extent shares some collective unconscious, especially with the sharing of information and being in the information age. And so this over here um, is really going to be something that, oops, let's make that like so. I am writing upside down and it is not always easy. Okay, so these are the ideas of Carl Jung. And Carl Jung's idea is that, you know, you may have in your own way, on your own island, you may have your own individual consciousness. And my thinking and your thinking on our two little islands can be quite different, even though we may have some things in common. We're going to have our conscious, which is each to ourselves, our own unconscious. And then we're going to have separate unconscious, which this is mine and that's yours. We don't share these unconscious thoughts. These are our own unconscious thoughts. But then we all also share and are connected by, just like the Hawaiian Islands are connected under the water, we're connected by our collective unconscious or collective subconscious thoughts. And so this is where a lot of beautiful things are, where we all remember something collectively as a, you know, as a species, or we all remember something collectively that's a very big historical event. And this is also, however, where we store our intergenerational trauma and our biases and things like 
systemic racism come from collective subconscious as well. Things we are not even really aware that we think, but they're in there deriving things that we do. So I hope that helps you to picture to some extent different ways of picturing your consciousness and your subconsciousness. And now what we're going to do is we're going to really relate these ideas of the iceberg and of the islands and the collective unconscious. We're going to relate that to the brain. So just a little bit extra here is that Freud would probably consider this part here the ego. And he would probably say that this part here was the superego. And that kind of crosses over a little bit the line into the subconscious. And then down here, he would call this the id. So if you've heard those terminologies, you can kind of help to visualize where they would end up. But anytime you're under here, anytime you're under the water, this is where it can be really hard to dredge those memories up. Things get stored away all throughout your life and you don't always remember them. And sometimes you're not even aware that they're there. Maybe you've had that experience before. Maybe you've had a, a memory and then perhaps you didn't even know that it was there and then you had something like a session of hypnosis and you were able to remember something from your childhood for example so if that's happened to you if you have ever had that then you understand that hypnosis is a way to get into the subconscious there's also things like altered states of consciousness so altered states can definitely be a way to access these memories so if you have done something like a psychedelic then and you may have an empathogen or an entheogen even. You may have then access different stuff that was unconscious or subconscious that you weren't really able to tap into otherwise. So that can be something that is also a way, a vehicle to getting, tapping into this zone. But how can you, if you consciously know that you want to do behavior change, but something else keeps stopping you, probably something in your subconscious that's trying to keep you safe. Maybe you had an experience as a child where you tried to make a certain change and that wasn't safe for you. So your body's going to try and protect you from doing that now. So I'm going to show you in the next video how um, the brain relates to these different parts of thinking and the actual physical structures in the body and how there's a mind-body connection between our conscious and subconscious and how we can tap into those things other than perhaps with hypnosis and altered states. So I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.